There are some people who simply live. Wait for it and then there are people who wring the joy out of life like water from a wet towel. Tim LaFollette makes that second group look boring. Go back, go back, go back now. Uh, Tim is an angel. He's uh, up there with the most amazing people I've ever met in my life. On the 70th anniversary of Lou Gehrig's farewell speech, Fans. teams around the country for the past two weeks had someone perform it. You've been reading about a bad band. break I got. I, however, was one of the few that memorized it. Yet today, I, I consider, consider myself, myself the luckiest man on, on the, the face, face of the earth. You know, you've been hearing about the bad break I got, but today I feel like the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I can, I can relate to that. Everyone who loved him might find that kind of odd. When he was just a kid, his mother died of Lou Gehrig's disease. Later that same year, his grandmother did too. And then one day, late in the summer of 2008, Tim met a girl. This was not just any girl. On their first date, she stole away to the bathroom to call a friend to tell her she'd just met the man she was going to marry. And Tim was even more taken with her. They were only dating for a few months when Tim was walking down Elm Street here in downtown Greensboro. He turned to go into a restaurant and his leg gave way. For six months, doctors looked for what it could be. And then finally, they met with a neurologist and... They actually used the full name of it and said, uh, this is all consistent with a myotrophic uh, lateral sclerosis. Um, and just paused for a second, I guess, waiting for a reaction, which was you know, very stunned and, and whatnot. Uh, There's nothing that will take the, the wind out of your lungs quite like somebody telling you that one day your, your best friend is going to die in one of the worst possible ways ever. But when it's someone with as much life and humor as Tim, Winning that battle is going to take a heck of a disease. Hi, my name's Tim. I'm living with ALS, but I still got this fine thing on my arm. <laughs> I made an agreement that day that I wasn't going to do the, you know, the noble thing of pushing her away and not letting her be a part of this as long as she made sure that this didn't consume her life. This wasn't the focus of her life. What Kaylin did do was put up a simple Facebook page and watch an organic movement blossom. Within the first 10 hours of it being up, I had hundreds of emails. And the action soon followed. Not only have people been donating their money, but they've been donating time, they've been donating services. This, the disease is nothing compared to like this response. Like, he doesn't really fully comprehend, I don't think, how important this process is to everyone around him. That we don't just do it for him, we do it because we have to do it. We don't have a choice. Coincidence did not lead us here tonight. Tim and Kaylin got married a few months later. Some amongst us would call it fate or destiny or God. They may be all right. Although it wasn't a legal marriage because that would cost them the Medicare that they need to get by. Yeah. But anyone who knows them will tell you no couple is more dedicated to each other than this one. And that's a good thing because the storm was on the horizon. Half of the people with ALS don't survive more than a year and Tim was 10 months in. I can't imagine that things are going to take a dive and such a dive in the next two months that it's all over. Hi. In fact, Tim felt well enough that he and Kaylin spent their honeymoon in Scotland, Come on. where Tim had lived when he was younger. We wake up by doing the chicken dance. The time of their life. <laughs> until the disease insisted on taking the lead role near the end of the trip. I realize this isn't the best camera angle in the world because, but uh, I don't really have much of a choice because I can't, I don't have the strength to even put the camera on the table. My breathing is very shallow. My limbs are really weak since I've come here. I've lost almost all remaining use of my right hand and the left is going so quickly it's really taking me uh, aback. I'm really scared at this point about what's happening next. I just have a hell of a time living through this the rest of this life. Um, we're going to fight for what we believe in. 
We're gonna fight for each other. And we're gonna be happy. When they got back from Scotland, the concerts and other fundraisers started up again. But the disease saw its chance to rob Tim of even this small joy of playing with his old bandmates. You just sit there with your hands tied and watch somebody slowly lose everything they physically love to do. Um, and, and you just have to sit there and say it's okay, even though it's really not. Tim has one of the most aggressive forms of ALS, and by this fall, less than 18 months after his diagnosis, he was largely confined to his home. His friends, now going by the name the Often Awesome Army, took over much of his round-the-clock care. But seeing the mind that they all loved locked in a prison of flesh that wouldn't respond was taking its toll. Tim had to have a breathing tube cut into his neck and the cheerfully defiant voice that once introduced him. Hi, my name is Tim and I am living with Luke Eric's disease. Was quickly my name is Tim. surrendering to a computer. Man, I had a LS, America's best kept secret disease. We don't have the money or that celebrity or that big pink ribbon that everybody knows. There's not the iconography that comes with this disease. What there is for Tim and Kaylin is a connection so deep that words don't really need to be spoken. Did you catch that? I'm not sure I'm going to get to say goodbye. I'm not sure it's going to happen. So as this disease plods on in, in its slow march to the unthinkable, Tim LaFollet lives not for anyone's sympathy, but to shout a message even when he has a voice no more. Hoping you'll not just hear his message. We're all terminal. But do something about it. Um, some of us just unfortunately know how they're going to go. But I think that it's way more important to see how amazing the world is, even though it will eventually cease to be.